Seems like I've been doing a lot of videos walking around. I probably have to figure out the ideal angle with which to hold the camera in my head. If I hold it down and lean forward, that's good, but if I'm outside, I get light behind me. In this case, I don't want you to see the mess I just passed. Um, and so I held it at an angle where you couldn't see it. I think we can get more elegant about that, like filming how we want to for the benefits we like. You know, I ultimately used to be shy about filming myself. i apparently not that shy anymore. Because, um, you know, various reasons. Well, right now we're going to go outside and we're going to consider a thing I was thinking about. We want to be comfortable, right? And so we adjust our lives to the climate in order to be maximally comfortable. So there's two times a day that matter that we should add to the graph, right? We've got the graph of like when it's comfortable and when it isn't and what the temperature is, you know, during the day, the highs and the lows. In that, uh, we can look at the hours of the day for different times of the year. And we can say when we should, basically there's two, there's two things. Like the reason I brought it up is because it suddenly isn't too hot out, right? It's now a little after three. Actually, I should check what time it is. It's March 25th, 2021. Uh, the time is important because we're going to want to draw this graph out. And it's probably almost always the same amount off of civil twilight. It's not like we need to record this for a year or something. 1637. That's 437. We'll call it five o'clock. Um, so I would say that on, on this date, March, whatever, uh, 25th, um, it's a little bit after the equinox, I believe. I think we just had one. And so it's a pretty good example. So the question is then, when is sunset? Because it's the amount of time before sunset that matters. I would say right now we're two hours from sunset, or two hours from it going a little bit below the trees. It still filters in through the trees. But uh, the, the reverse of that, the, the morning version of that, is at what time would you peel off your extra, your, your morning layer? And, and I want to write these times down because I want to help people with their planning a lot. I want to help them immensely. Um, and so if, 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 if we kind of make a template for the day of ideal behaviors, then people who are very much in performance mode, which may be that they're on camera performing, um, they're here to have a very intense experience. And I think that scheduling a bunch of things actually really helps with that. It, I, I can help you understand when you should uh, have your extra layer on or off. Now, right now, it's still earlier than I would go get my extra layer, but I'd want to know where it was, you know? And so maybe it's an hour... I don't know but the thing is darkness comes on quickly so you want to make sure you get your headlamp before you need it uh, one of the more annoying things about a dusk is when people uh, did not go get their headlamp when it was light out because they were busy doing something else and they didn't plan ahead quite right and then it's dark and then people have to walk them to their cabana and walk back with them to go get this thing that basically the person didn't think ahead. And it wastes people's time. And because those people can't get to the commander by themselves, they don't have a light. They're literally unenlightened. And so somebody has to help them. That tells me a lot about the person who does that. You know, I mean, we all make mistakes, no problem. Um, I've made a couple ones that were actually scary. You know, I'm out here in the dark in the woods alone. And, uh, but it's an imposition on other people. So, so this latter part of the day, um, I'm noticing that it's really comfortable temperature for video, but it's not for wind. And I made a whole different video about this. The wind is a problem. And so if the wind is going to pick up during much of the seasons, right, in the evening at this time, it has this nice temperature and light. You know, it wants to just, just after the sun goes down, there's a really awesome period. And we'll try and pay attention to this actually in this video. I'm going to watch this evening, right? Come on. So we've got two hours, I said. Now I'm standing in a place where it will be shady here in less time, an hour, because there's some trees there. So that's another odd thing that I will add to this uh, about using dusk and using dawn is that mapping out, because the, the forest is taking shape, right? Mapping out where the best spots for early light are the earliest light in each region, right? Every area. So 
Um, how do I how do I say that better? Um, every part of the property, wherever the light hits there first, that is a first light location, and we need to identify a bunch of them and GPS them, mark them with stakes, and say and remember them, and then say to ourselves. Okay, and it changes during the year a little bit because uh, the sun rises a different spot. It goes down a different spot. It's not that big a difference, but in some places it does matter. So the point is that th this one we need to check over time, over the year, you know. Um, but we can project it. I mean, you know which way the sun's going. And you can just, you know, kind of say, oh, the sun will be over that way from there because the sun will go that way, you know. It's not super tricky. Um, and so anyway, we set aside all those best first light sunrise spots, even if it's much later than the ideal spot. Because I know there's an ideal spot right here to get the sun, right? Most of these places don't have it, and they're not going to get it. And so even if that sun hits it first at 11 o'clock, I want to know. When does it do it? And this is true for the Barranca especially, because the sun getting into there at all isn't super common. And that may cause us to think about how we can selectively cut a few trees to change the Barranca's uh, light amount without changing its humidity level, because it's more humid there and better for plant propagation and some things. So, well, back to the people part. Uh, so we, we mark these sunspots, and we also, conversely, mark the places where the sun, the last light of the day is, because the last light of the day is really valuable for us. That's our best light. Um, and the truth is, once it goes down over the trees, everything becomes the same. So as we make a list of sets, you know, places you could film, uh, we want to have a spreadsheet which lists what's the earliest light there and and then you could sort by those even and figure out where's the earliest light or where's the latest light spot in that area kind of thing um and then uh and then where is the best place for sunset in terms of getting the, the maximum of it basically so the longest light you can have and that's nice side lighting it often ends up softer it's just not as harsh also it doesn't feel as harsh so i'm not we shouldn't just think about filming obviously but you know making comfortable places to be and so this is a case where we're going to change our entire layout of how the humans use the land based on what we know long term will be most valuable for us. Now, late light could mean we put a garden there. Early light could mean we put a garden there. I've had some success with gardens that don't get the last hottest part of the sun, but they do get morning sun. Those are nice little gardens. And so we, we may not want to just think about this for human use directly, although gardens are human use, I suppose. So I'm here early. I'm hot. This is uncomfortable. I'm wearing a black shirt. The sun's right on me. So we could compare this with the shade, but the truth is the shade's always comfortable here. So that's nothing new. What we're trying to find out at the moment is when is the best time at dusk, you know, in March 25th, 2021, and then we'll figure out, like, during different parts of the year, what the best time is and also best locations, depending on what best means. But... We shall see. Arr. Oh yeah, this is all nice back in here. And even here, actually, this is a bench here. And there's kind of dappled sunlight. Oh. And that's very comfortable, actually. That's very comfortable. So, yeah, I think 5 o'clock. So I need to go check and see what time sunset is according to... The official thing, which might be when it reaches a far away horizon, here sunset is earlier because I have a whole bunch of trees uh, that make it be later. It blocks the sun earlier because they're tall trees. And there's a hill right there too. And that's why it's worth it to do a map and figure out for the entire place, like, when is there sun where? I mean, just knowing that. And it's a complex question. I've never seen a sun map that had that, a map of a property that... You know, you could color code it and have like areas and it could be like uh, you could you could have one in color that was for um, summer solstice and, and one that was for winter solstice and you can kind of guess what's in between because it's equinox so you don't have to make that shape so the shape would actually show up one color for summer solstice one color for winter solstice of an area on the map where the sun hits doesn't that be that accurate more accurate would be nice though would help with planning quite a bit and uh and then on each one of those, at what time, we want to know what time uh, is the earliest light it gets and the latest light it gets. 
Um, I guess we don't have to put the latest light. We should though, because it's an interesting spot. And, and that matters because for example, if a place got both uh, early and late light during the day, then uh, we could probably want to invest more in, in, in that space. Like let's say it was a sitting area, right? Where people are sitting and enjoying the, the bright first light of the day or the last light. It could be that it's an exercise area. Who knows? Um, anything that we, you know, whatever ideal use we can think of. We have potentially years to think of this, of course. I've been here a while and I haven't built that much. But uh, I think that's a type of mapping that I've never heard of. And you could even make spaces for you could make like a sculpture if you had a place that had both uh, both late sun and early sun you could make a sculpture with a, a tube in it or something that, that lets light through a certain way and then you could try and draw a dot or s somehow make a thing that draws out the path of the sun on a rock or something there's a variety of ideas you'd come up with that um, basically a, a sort of a sundial in a way that tells you the date you know we can do one that, that tells the time, but they, we have this weird daylight saving stuff and all that. And I understand that. Um, so that's more difficult. But, you know, we could make a sundial. It's, I don't know, kind of cute. I'd rather make a labyrinth, actually, if I have a choice. So, yeah, tracking the path of the sun. It's all about the sun. And thinking about how, what the annual cycle is and how that changes things. It rains an obvious one, but... What the sun does, actually, there's a lot more to think about. I'm a little less interested in what the moon does. I know a lot of people get real mystical about the moon, mystical. But I have no reason to think that the moon has a major impact on things. I've never seen any test or science done on any actual effect that, like, whether you plant at this time or at that time, it really matters at all. And so my default position is, no, sorry, prove it. You know, everything else, I just don't, I just don't see the connection the light of the moon whatever there could be clouds it, it varies so <sighs> yeah it is comfortable out right now really comfortable huh i still wouldn't go get my headlamp though well i would actually if i was if i was um doing that task in one place and then maybe this is kind of when we choose like to have activities end maybe right about the time where it's before it gets too cold, like clearly before. And half hour minimum, hour would be way better. Uh, we we shut the activity down. I think that it, what I'm trying to do is develop our behavior based on climate, right? And I've thought of some of these things before. It's not the first time. But, you know, sitting here with you, because you're such a great conversationalist, um, it makes me question everything I believe. And so I want to play around with the idea uh, in your absence so that uh, so you can object to things I say because I'll object too. I'll object and then I'll see if I can see what I think of that. Very creative about objecting to things. I used to be a tester in software with, with software, and the same skills work for this kind of thing. Oh my God, that guy's big. There's a turkey vulture up in that tree. This is not the kind of camera you can see that with because it's very wide angle. But uh, he's huge. The dogs hate these guys. I don't know why. Ah. Sometimes I feel like I'm saying my own script, and I am. I guess you get used to being you. Ah. Is that it? That's all I got on... Oh, designing the whole agenda around the, the climate. Yes, I think it's brilliant because you get an inherent, inherent immediate energy win. You make things better, objectively better by my standards, <laughs> um, by getting people into a, a tune with the natural cycle of light. And I think it's a healthier way to live. I think it's how we evolved to live. There's some odd details about sleep and things like that. We can always learn about those things, and, and many scientists are just doing brilliant work to help us understand who we are. But we don't actually have to understand all the science behind something to know what works and doesn't. And so it works to have people in a coherent order working together. 
Um, I think sometimes when we fantasize utopia, we fantasize something where there's a high degree of individualism and we all do what we want whenever we want it. Um, I think there was a show called Brave New World that was based on the book by Huxley or somebody. Um, I've read that in 20 years. Oh, well, geez, 30. Well, I got older. More than 30. <laughs> um, but I, I think that... Um, well, actually, Brave New World has both individualism and non-individualism. The TV show of it, which was great, um, had the upper classes having a high degree of uh, personal autonomy and basically spoiled rich people of the industrial world like many people I know are. Um, a minority worldwide, by the way. Um, you know, a lot of people are still in poverty and uh, there's a lot of people who aren't in official poverty who uh, certainly don't have a lot of personal auto autonomy in their choices. And so, you know, when I think about this kind of environment, like... I, I'm reminded of festival culture and things like that where our, our pinnacle uh, thing we seek is some kind of a glorious existence where we do whatever we want we, and we want to do it. And I, I don't even think that's a good goal. In fact, that's why even though I live a chaotic life where I do whatever I want whenever I want. Uh, and that's one of the hardest things for me about setting up a schedule is I'll probably have to follow the schedule that residents have. The same kind of agreement, right? So <laughs> that changes things when you're a person who, who's making rules, but you also have to follow them, as opposed to a lot of people make rules and don't have to follow them. Uh, the rules for participants and residents are completely different. A whole different set of rules. With residents, I can make agreements that are longer term and make agreements that are not at all interesting to even talk about for a, a regular participant. You know, And, and I, I'm not going to say it's shallow versus deep. It's just people who are here longer term versus not. And it changes my investment in them. It changes what kind of things they're doing. Uh, it changes the social contract that they have with me and with this place. So, so you know, do I? To what degree do do residents follow a schedule, and which scheduled items do they follow? Uh, well, first of all, some residents may have a completely separate system from the from the participants. People who are primarily here to uh, experiment, perform. Uh, be part of the, kind of the Bosky Adventure thing, um, it, it's very likely that some residents will not wish to participate in that. There are no residents except me and the dogs, so that's not too hard to figure out at the moment. But I think that this is one of the benefits I have of, of developing this thing as I am to get to kind of the, the human side rather than trees and stuff like that, which are hugely important. But um, designing a kind of vision of how people could operate well together in a community and i don't agree with a lot of things that are just taken as canon or taken as given uh, about when people talk about communities there's certain kinds of people who talk about intentional communities a lot of people you say the word and they respond with oh cult um or uh what's other things people say oh i would you know never want to be stuck with people that's i don't want to be stuck with people i got these issues too like i agree with people who are critics of of the idea of intentional communities and I like aspects of intentional communities, but there's a lot of attributes of them which uh, people take as they have to be that way, and I just simply don't agree. What we're not, I'm not going to look at like somebody's particular type of model of modern intentional community and say that's the ideal. I'm going to break it down into as many elements as I can and then compare that with every experiment that I can compare it with. And that should be done with data in a spreadsheet to the degree it can be. A lot of it can't be because we don't have really good data about certain groups. But, um, you know, sizes of groups, or cultural agreements, just, you know, whatever, all of it. And, and so I guess all I can do in, in that is express what I want to do with residents and what I'm open to and maybe various models of it. Because I don't want to, to just say, this is how you be a resident. I want to say, you know, what do you bring to the table and what kind of place do you want to be a resident in? And does that match up with how things are now? And does it match up with the vision I have for the future? Because I have had some people just tell me like, well, no, you have to do it this way. This is the right way and all this. And it's like, well, it's not my right, my right way. And I'm not going to do it the way I don't like. And so I consider those people kind of rude, actually, when they do that. Not that many people do that. Most people are whatever. Everyone's their own trip. Everyone's got their own problems, too, as far as I can tell. Especially the people who pretend they don't have any. Uh, that is a massive turkey vulture. 
a buzzard. They eat uh, dead shit. They get a bad rap, I think. Like, you know, sometimes in cartoons or something. I think I saw one in the, the, the turkey vultures with the bad guys or something or some movie. I don't know what I saw. But they're actually extremely helpful birds, and they clean up stuff you don't want to clean up. Dead stuff. Stuff dies all the time. I come across pieces of an armadillo sometimes or fuzz of something, and maybe who knows what happened, why there's some fur on the ground. But uh, these guys actually go in and they, they do the excellent job of cleaning up the carcasses of the dead things so we don't have to deal with them. And they leave some bones for us, bigger bones, and we can collect those as kind of uh, mementos of nature here. So I'm still on the same task. And what time is it? Arr. I don't know if somebody will edit this or, or what, so we might lose what time it is. But it's now, oh, well, now it's the real five. Wait a minute. Two, four, five. Right. 1656. Okay, so it's just now getting the real five o'clock because I rounded quite a bit. I round off things a lot. Um, and it's super comfy now. So, and that's why we picked five o'clock, I think. I think we, I knew it was a little bit hot. So this is looking really nice. We get nice side lighting. Uh, I don't think you can see that, can you? That is unfortunate. There's Boogie. Hi, Boogie. All the lazy doggins. <laughs> can you see that guy? This is Cabron. He's laying in the dirt. He's laying upside down. And he's dirty, and he looks very comfortable. He loves to lay like that. He's a goofball. If there was a dog hammock, he would sit in it. Okay, so this tree over here, why can't that be seen very well? So that light over there, that lighting is softer, and it's oranger, it's redder. And the sun is not quite as strong, because now instead of coming... Uh, from a high elevation with no protection, it's coming in sideways over there. The camera does not do it justice. Not that it's a real pretty day, it's boring. You know, when there's no clouds, it's boring. So that's why I was saying earlier that the cloudiest times of the year are in some ways the best time of the year. The clouds start in like June, but then the reason I recommended August was because of what? No, it was August. September, it was September, October, because they're not totally rainy anymore, they're not too cold, the days are still long, uh, and they have lots of fluffy clouds in the post-rainy part of the year, and everything's green because we just had the forest growing under all the rain for the whole rainy season. I think that's the ideal month. Now, you shouldn't think, because I say that, that the other months aren't good, because they all have their good times. Like, I'm, I like this now. It's too dry and it's too dry for me. But also I can fix some problems architecturally by, you know, during the hottest part of the day, which isn't that hot, I have shade. And shade takes care of it, you know. And I do have shade. I have terraces and porches and things all over the place. So, um, so what are we ending up with? This is what I'm thinking. Don't bark at birds. Jesus. What use is it to bark at a bird? Birds aren't even real. <laughs> Uh, so we're ending up with this get out of bed in the morning put on your layers it's light out enough to walk and uh, get your day going quick guzzle some water right away go pee poo if you need to um, put on your, your more thick layer and go join whatever's going on that thing is going to be possibly an early morning activity and a breakfast. Happens at the same time. Breakfast is real simple. It's going to be uh, juice, fruit juices. Uh, veggie juices would be if there's enough people to support it. But it's another whole process, you know. Cut up fruit, bread, uh, hot water should be available. is isn't right now. But it should be available on tap with a solar hot water heater. And it's already hot from the day before. And so you can pour it in your thermos or cup and you've got hot water immediately. Now your best option on getting warm quickly is moving. So a lot of morning activities could be movement based. People like doing yoga because during yoga, you're actually, if you're doing it, it might be strenuous, right? 
And so, so you might as well do it when it's chilly. Who cares? And the sunrise is coming up, you know, and the sun isn't too strong. So it's a perfect time for morning activities and or breakfast. And it can change throughout the week. It can change. And I want about a month long schedule of different things that occur at breakfast. I want to know which CD gets played if there was music being played, and it would be Creative Commons or, or Public Domain. Um, I want to know if there's an activity happening. I want to know if there's any alterations to the food. I want a seasonal calendar of what fruits we, we serve, because we serve what's in season. Um, and I've done breakfast like this right here before. It's awesome. It's very fun. Um, my system here can only handle a fairly small number of people. Like, if it was getting over 12, I would start wanting help more. Well, cutting up fruits always good help. Okay, now you're there. And that morning activity, um, there could be a short one right after that. And it could almost be a, 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 an all group activity um, that you could just kind of check in for the day. I think that's worthwhile. It's basically the agenda of the day. And uh, that could happen after the initial eating of breakfast and also internet could go on before breakfast so that people who are motivated for internet will come out here and use internet real quick uh, maybe give them a half hour or so but um, not too long uh, and then people start you know after you do the agenda meeting maybe a group photo who knows mornings a nice time for a group photo sure we could pick a nice set around here and even have a spot where you can get an angle on people if there's a larger group um, but I'm imagining really two sessions a day, two larger sessions, um, and that's before food and after food. Before food, food's at 2 o'clock, right? You have how many hours? Well, it depends on the time of the year. And for some reason, we don't actually move lunch around. Maybe we should, but 2 o'clock seems to work pretty well. It always has. It's very traditional in this culture to eat at 2 o'clock, so we're going to eat at 2 o'clock. So... You have these morning hours of, let's say, 9, 10, 11, 12. You could have two sessions in the morning. You can divide the morning into two sessions. Some people will be doing the same thing all morning. Some people won't. Depends on what is what track you're on and what your goals are and a variety of things. Because uh, I want to make a template for you know even groups to come in. I want to say, look, this is our template. Everything is geared around it. We know why it works and fit your, your courses into these hours. And then you determine how many days you need and what spaces you need, and we'll figure all that out. Um, after lunch, lunch takes at least till three. And after lunch, sometimes people have already had a pretty big day of intense things, hopefully. So some people are up for more things than some people aren't. Um, I think it's a great time to offer, like we could figure out which types of activities are better earlier or later. For example, your earlier activity might be better for physical activity. So it could be like, dang near after breakfast right you just immediately move into more physical activities um how you blend that in with the two like does everybody go back to their cabana because now they're they don't want their jacket anymore maybe it's a big area that's one of the reasons i want to start putting people closer in because sometimes i've had group camping and it's difficult and i think people need to be closer to their tents at this stage in the evolution of the space And then after lunch, yeah, there's a, we've got basically, it doesn't really end at 3, it ends at 3.30. I'm going to call it 4. I'm going to call, the lunch period is two hours long. It's already 4 o'clock then. In the wintertime, it's going to get cold earlier. We're, co we're closed in the wintertime anyway, mostly. We've got eight months when we, were to, we really want to run programs. And so at that point, we've got, are you keeping up here? i got to put also my notes and stuff. That's why I'm doing the video. Um, so if you're already at 4 o'clock, you basically have one event before dinner. Yeah, and whatever that is, it depends on time of year. We can figure it out, and we can schedule it for as long as we want, or we could just pick a short time. And it could be that, you know, evening, people, there's a lot other things to do. And the other thing is what kind of event, you know, what kind of event in what time slot and what places. Because uh, we talked last time in a different video about um, evening events and, and things like that. And you know, these are going to end up being pretty long days if they get run well. Like, people are going to be tired at the end of the day, and I want that. I want people to be exhausted. Not, that, not exhausted, but I want them to be have their days very full. You know, I want to maximize their potential in the space. This is not a place to come and relax. I'm not interested. You know, I mean, some people could do it. You know, like I'll rent a house to a hermit or something. 
Um, you know, there's a whole hermit experience idea. But that's really not my core function with the place. I want to develop solutions for a better world, and uh, we'll have a good time doing it. We'll do things nobody else would do because they sound dumb or they just wouldn't take the time to do it or whatever. And I don't know where success will come from. I, I don't know what problems there'll be, but I have some pretty good ideas and a lot of experience. So um, I want to kind of make more formal that whole process of getting to that point. Um, so I have to kind of divide in my head this, the resident side and the participant side and then make some uh, materials for both that talk about very different aspects of being in a place because the entire relationship is different. Um, I've talked about that in other videos. I, I guess I need to do the resident side more formally and I actually need to make you know, concise with an outline messages to people. I've done some of those for, for um, participants. But I think I, I could select out of these long videos things that really help them understand how to connect here better and be the best them and uh, get a lot out of the space without being demanding and giving into the space and then and, and, and accepting and, and developing this amazing experience, uh, which is for different people very different. Some people, when they're, when they're here, they focus on the social aspect. Other people really like spending a lot of time in nature. They love it. And I understand why, because I love it too. <laughs> you know, I don't live here for no reason. In fact, that's the only really reward I get out of this project is I get to live here. Um, as I look at this evening go by and or begin really, um, I'm doing a tiny little science experiment of in this space, how would we optimally use the climate at this particular date? And we can then extrapolate and wonder, well, you know, because I've got some really dry months coming up here. I've got this is March, okay, it just got warm. April, May are really hot. April and May are the hottest months. So if somebody wants heat, that's when they should come. Uh, and so that's probably when you can sleep the best with you know being the warmest at night. It's still be a little chilly at night, so you still gotta prepare. Um, huh, I wonder what I could do during those months to maximize the benefit of heat, you know. I want to run hot springs, like build hot springs uh, or hot tubs or whatever. Uh, I would love an artificial hot springs. But that would be running mostly in the rainy season unless there was a bunch of storage. So it's very difficult. Uh, it's just a hard time with plants. So, you know, I'm so focused on plants. I mean, I could pump a lot of solar energy under houses into the ground. I could... I have a lot of sun, and they could be solar pumps. I don't like pumps. They break. But I could have a thing which just all it does is pump hot water under the building. Um, and then the, the, the... Right, you'd have to pump it in so the other water goes back up. And you would want the, the outtake to be at the bottom of the cistern or whatever that the water's in, right? So you're sucking it out of the bottom. That's the coldest part. It's coming in through the top. And it is only going in through the top because the cold stuff's warming. I don't know how you set up that cycle. But we want it to cycle. I guess you have to use a pump, right? A pump. I don't want to use a pump. Because I could pump the cold water up. I would pump the cold water up into the hot water heater. Or I would pump the hot water down. I think usually you think of pumps as pumping up. Whatever. So, you know, you have a nice pipe there. It's a clean system. The water's not being added to it or removed from it, right? And it doesn't even have to be water. It could be another, another liquid actually disperses uh, heat better. And it could be that it goes into coils or something within the, um, within the cistern of water. I don't like that as much. Um, I think you could just have an intake and an outtake for the, for the entire cistern as it is. And the cold water in that will always be lower. The hot water will come in the top. We push up the cold water into the heater, and all day long, that thing will be cycling. Now, I, I wish I knew, like, on a pipe, can you have a thing that tells you how much water is going through it, like a, a gauge that records things? And can I have a thermometer? Yeah, I, need a, I need thermometer trackers, temperature trackers, to track the, the heat inside the cistern. So essentially, we're heating an enclosed bunch of water as hot as we can. 
And it's my belief that we won't be able to boil it if it's inside there. And we also don't care if it's insulated. Why? Normally we want our hot water to be insulated. It's because we're just pumping it into the envelope of the building. And we would find out over time how big of, of solar hot water heaters would be appropriate. I think that one that they sell for a, you know, a family, a, a fairly decent sized one, could actually do too much. Like you wouldn't want to get that hot. Because you're just trying to make it so that your building is uh, hotter. You can always decrease heat with more airflow, which is awesome. Very healthy. Um, I mean, you're not doing forced air or anything like that. I don't know that we have to worry about making it too hot with that method. I think you're more likely with passive solar to mess it up. And you can always swap out your solar hot water heater. In the bizarre case in which it was making it too hot, uh, you just switch to a smaller solar hot water heater or abandon the system, whatever. Uh, it's a closed system, which I like. And that's not true. You have to have a vent tube on the top. Uh, and... You'd want to make sure you always had water in it. So you do have to have a way to deliver water into the system. And that's going to be from above the, the height of the tank of the, the hot water heater. You're going to have, be able to fill with colder water from there, have that heated up and add to the system because you have to have a vent pipe out the top and the total amount of water in your system may reduce. How do we tell if, it, if we're running out of water in the system? I don't know. You can't see the water. Uh, one way to do it would be to open a spigot. There's a spigot on the side of the thermos part. And if you open a spigot and no water comes out, there's no water in it. Uh, the way it is now, what happens? It never can run out inside the tubes because of where the, 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 the exits are. One of the exits goes out of the top of the thermos. So that's really critical because you never want to have one of these things be empty. Because then when it's empty and it gets hot, if you were to suddenly pour in cold water, you could actually break the glass inside and ruin it. So there is some maintenance on these. These are not items you can have laying around. We have to actually protect the location it is without blocking the sun, which is a trick, right? That's not the easiest thing in the world. Uh. Now, I always imagine solar hot water heaters out of the, outside the envelope of the building, outside the building, and being lower than it and having sun, which is even more difficult to do. You could do that on a south-facing slope, of which I don't have a ton. I've got some in the, what's called the point down by the south gate, and that is an almost south-facing slope that's by a road and uh, could have out in front of it solar hot water heaters on a special porch or something. And those would work during the hottest time of the day and move lots of energy in. Um, and it would be an uncovered porch, obviously, for you know solar exposure. But you could keep people from breaking the tubes, basically. You don't want kids playing around it. You don't want a baseball hitting it, you know, because we've got a lot of baseball going on around here. Uh, and so, so I do have an idea for a building over there where I specifically will be, be building up four stories. And I want there to be an entire uh, first floor or something be covered with a bunch of solar hot water heaters or maybe second floor. But the key here is that if I want to use the energy inside the building, I have to somehow have solar objects that are lower than the space I want the water to go into. That could be a kitchen or just heating the building. And that's tricky because we don't want them on the ground that much, right? Um, if we had terraced buildings and we could put the hot water heater on, the, on one building on the roof, and then that hot water goes up into the other person's building. And then also rainwater comes down from the person's building that's above. These are terrace stepped buildings, kind of like they have in Mycos in Greece, but a little more organized because those probably evolved. And we can actually design the similar systems of, of dense living, but sharing all these energy systems. Because you want to be above things or below things. There's you know, gravity and you want to skip pumps. And uh, there's all these things you can do. Um, the, the system I was imagining a second ago was pumping it down into a cistern. And what I had in my head there was I was thinking more about buildings that they're like around here, you know, and they're kind of on their own. And the only thermal mass they have is deep within the building. So we can do that. But even the pump part bugs me so much that I really feel like I want to abandon those kind of systems entirely. You know, it's hard to build pumps. It's hard to power them. Uh, they fail. They just mechanically can't handle it. They cannot handle generations and generations of use. And therefore, that's, that means the design was wrong. 
the architecture was wrong. We didn't have the buildings relating to each other in the right, right way as far as energy goes. We didn't think about the sun enough. If we adjust to the climate, everything, our schedule, the architecture, if we adjust ourselves to the natural world, we will save our lives and build an awesome world, have a good time, uh, live healthier, and uh, you know, just list every good thing you want. You know, but we're out of tune. Everybody knows it. Anybody who thinks that this is okay isn't. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to shut off for the moment. I'm going to wonder what the heck I'm doing. Oh, I'm, oh I, know, I know what my bigger goal is. It's still to find it when it's comfy. Let's just go check over here real quick. Ah. From this spot, it's about an hour till it hits the trees. I'm doing that by holding my hand up to the light. I hold my hand up, you know, like hands, like fingers. And, and I just put my finger at the bottom of the sun, the top, my top finger, right? This top part up here. And then, and then each one of these is 15 minutes. And so as it gets closer to the, to the, to the um, horizon, in this case it's just trees, it's not way down, like an ocean or something. And so I, in this case, a while ago I measured two hands, and I think I've been talking so long it's about one now. That's why these files are too big to upload. Ah, yar. Okay, I had a tiring couple days. Ah, I'll see you later. Ah. So let's get back to this here. Uh, civil Twilight, no Civil. Yeah, half an hour basically after after sunset. Twenty minutes on this thing, uh, and then it's the same for the morning, I believe. Probably, I didn't see that on the spreadsheet. All I have to do is take that exact spreadsheet, try and copy it into a, 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 the web page, copy it into a spreadsheet, and then have times placed in reference to the existing time, and that will tell me all throughout the year then when we should get up and do whatever, what we should do. When is the best spaces to do things? When can we capture energy? What can we do during parts of the year that we can't do during other parts of the year? When should we break the rules, you know, like on the solstice or something? Solstice seems like a great day to have a party. Maybe the solstices should be the biggest parties. The uh, summer one might have rain, may not. The winter one won't have rain, but the nights will be long. So. The way to celebrate the winter solstice and the summer solstice depends on what the nature of them is, and they're pretty darn different. So, so how's it looking out here, and what time is it? Arr. I wasn't gone that long. Went up and was annoyed with something I saw on my computer, and then I uh, came back down. I really got to watch out for that backlighting. You'll notice right there in that shot, I was backlit. That's bad. Uh, this is good. I'm actually using the building as a backdrop because everything else is kind of bright out back there. Like, watch me get darker. I got a little bit darker. If I go out here, and there's even more sky in it, see that's pretty bad. I'm too dark and I don't want to edit that. So I'd rather edit using my camera and controlling my angle. That's sometimes why I go like this, but right now there's a lot of light so that's even tough. Ah. So I've got half an hour half an hour till the sun goes down and uh, it's really comfy out um, I think that during a shaded in a shaded place during this time of the day it'd be really great so really we've got now don't do it don't do it dogs gonna trip me with that chain someday uh, so I gotta solve that problem it's going on uh, what is it, 540 I think so, 540. So, coming on towards six o'clock. Uh, sunset is officially at, I mean, and this is actually an interesting thing because this is during, just between like official sunset and what it really is here. This says it will be sunset at 1859, that's 659, which is the same as seven o'clock, okay? But right now, it's six o'clock. So what I'm getting is, the sun's going to go down a half hour to an hour too early here, or something. I, don't check my math on that. I'll use a spreadsheet. But back to the concept of it. Like right here, I could actually, if I wanted later sunsets as well, I could cut down trees right there. And I actually have a plan to cut down some of them. I'm not sure on one grove. And then some trees, some trees behind that up on a hill. I already have a plan to cut those anyway. Now, cutting them for the equinox would be ideal because that would make light come around this area. So I could cut a smaller sliver out of them and then 
some of that light wouldn't get through. The question is how wide is it and what's the angle difference? It's actually a pretty big wide angle difference and that kind of makes it so it's hard to to kind of slip some sunlight through the forest to just one spot that will be all year. Now cutting them for the equinox isn't a bad idea because it's two times of the year. Uh, I don't know. It's I've cut enough trees for, for now. I go in uh, cycles of occasionally I decide to implement a big plan. The plan is actually that whole hill is going to change anyway. But I'm not too worried about the sun necessarily being here, you know, an extra half an hour or something in this spot. I don't care about it. So I don't know if it's uh, worth thinking that deeply about. I'm not sure. So it's still a little windy. We want, uh, yeah, I just got to work on those sets, I guess. Oh, shit. This is supposed to have a bucket on it. Oh, man. Where'd the bu No, I, oh, the, on the, the other one had a bucket. This should have a bucket on it, too. Oh, right, I told somebody that, and then nothing happened. But can't do it all at once. There's actually, there is a V in the trees right where it's going down. And it was just the equinox, I believe, so that's not too bad. Uh, other times of the year, it would go down sooner in reference to uh, the official sunset. Uh, this is actually one of the best places for light on the land, the view, because you do actually get light somewhat late, not really, but you get sunrise. And I'm a big believer more in sunrise and sunset. Like if I had to pick between the two, I care about sun, sunrise and designing for sunrise. And that's because the sun comes up, the source of heat and life comes up right when you're at your coldest, right when you need it. And so, you know, late day sun is not as useful in a way. It's not uh, as far as like designing your building so that the, the sun comes directly into it, for example. Uh, a breakfast location, place overlooking the lake here where the sun comes up, and just using that sunlight to fill as much space as you can, to make comfortable spaces for people to be, to suck that light into your building early on has more value than... Uh, than the, the late day sun. Now for something like evacuated solar hot water uh, tubes or whatever, uh, you would want actually to get it south exposure because you want it for more time during the day and you want it higher sun and more intense and strong. And as we've talked about, the early morning sun isn't quite as strong anyway. So you're not gonna get as much heating value out of it. You'll still get some. And also it'll wake your system up. So biologically, it's really good for you, I think. Like get out there in the first light. Suck up the first rays of sun as much as you can. There's some times when there isn't a sun in the morning because it's cloudy. But you should still get out in whatever light there is. Your body still absorbs that stuff and it, and it wakes you up and gets you going. That's why we have an activity here up at the view in the mornings uh, because quite often there'll be a physical activity of some kind. I don't barely care what it is. Capoeira, yoga, jump around, dance around. We could have dance parties up here. I want to put some more sawdust in here though, I think. And then the rains will damp that down. Uh, this, there's a nice area overlooking the lake perfect spot for morning physical activities jesus what are these birds doing that's that same bird there's water over there dude here i'll go away bye what a cool bird i've not seen that bird around here lately or i don't recall it ever god damn it i'm wearing my reading glasses again that's the second time i've done that today at least I walk away from the computer, I'm wearing the reading glasses, and I, everything's blurry, but I'm used to it. And so, uh, oh man, these stairs are tough. I'm happy I'm doing them. Uh, I'm trying to, oh my God, use the other leg, the slightly weaker one. Not just go always up with the same leg, I should be alternating. But it's really hard. Oh, no, that's no problem. I can get in the groove of it. Okay. Upstairs. <laughs> it's actually good I moved upstairs because I'm getting tons of physical therapy now. I got to do everything myself and everything somewhere else. So I am moving my ass off with stuff. Wow. That's tiring. I said something wrong before, I'll correct it right after this. Um, I've got to get all that data in a spreadsheet. I've done spreadsheets before. Uh, 
And the thing is, as we do a social design of the day, uh, the, the rules apply differently at different times of the year, pretty radically. Like this time of the year, I mean, I walked around out there just a little bit. It was still kind of hot out, you know? So even though it's cooling down now, uh, and I'm you know, looking at how, how it cools down and when we lose light, this time of day, to be honest, I've had a long day, kind of, and I would like to be sitting around somewhere more. And so I think that activities during this time of the day should be um, probably more sedentary, although we can experiment with that and just offer people things at different times and really even test, like, do people want to play volleyball at this time of the day during this time of the year? You know, I think we should get down to that granular detail. And um, if something fun happens at a particular time, then we can focus on that. Now, I have made these kind of spreadsheets before. And, and I, what I did was I, I made one that tracked the moon, actually. And so I know I dissed the moon as not being relevant. But there are, are such a thing as full moon parties. Um, and the moon does affect our mood, especially living here in the forest with very little light. And so there's some nights where the, the moon is full and it comes up at the right time. And it actually is extremely illuminating. And you can kind of walk around outside, and, and even if you had a little fire, everything around it would be automatically lit up. So it's a great time to do evening activities when you have these evening moons and how full it is, right? So what you do is, it's pretty easy to do. You just go into like Excel or some spreadsheet thing, and you just mark down um, when the full moons and new moons are. And then, so you can figure out what the, and the equinox is, right? No, no, that's different, sorry. Um, and... And then when, what time it comes up. So you want, the, uh, you want it to be a full moon that is coming up so that it is high noon around the middle of the time that is dark that you would still be awake. Track that. Um, and it varies, right? But, for example, if, the, if a new moon comes up, it's useless to you in terms of light. It's just not interesting. So... We're not going to do much for the new moon. You could have a ritual or something if you want. Feel free. I don't care. But as far as the benefits to people of having the moon exist at night for them, here it makes it easier to uh, relate to people in a, in a dark space, in a dark night. Now, of course, I want more interior spaces built as well. But part of the goal here is to spend as much time of our lives outside. To live outside is better than to live inside. But we, then we need to make it more comfortable for us to do so. So there is a slight benefit to nighttime activities if they have a full moon that comes up some hours. It starts coming up before uh, sunset because we only have a certain number of hours for it to get from moon rise to moon noon. And moon noon, we want to be in the middle of the time that after it got dark and before bedtime. Now that's the ideal moon noon time, okay? If it's off by a couple of hours, it doesn't matter at all. So we have as a range then of about four hours when we would, we would say, okay, if it rises at this time, it's good. And we would mark in the spreadsheet, you'd put a different color in for those or something. Uh, and maybe I put priority columns on like what's better times or worse times and I score things and all that. But you don't have to get that complex. All you have to do is identify is when are, when are those moons going to come up that you can really use. Now, in this location, that would work great this time of year. And it does i've made these before and, and it does predict when you should have an evening activity um i don't much like the idea of full moon parties like that go all night long i think those should be quite rare um i do like the idea of the solstice party and maybe we give up the rules and we party all night you know summer solstice why not and then you look at what's the what's the closest moon to summer solstice that is a, a good moon and do we move the party closer to the better moon i don't know uh, do people come for three days because they're only three days apart? Who knows? Um, the winter one, you know, winter here is a little quieter. Uh, the nights are longer. Until I get better architecture here, better buildings, then it's not the best time to host very many people. I can really only host people I know. And so if p people want to come here, winter is actually not the best time to come. You could contact us. You never know. But, uh, you know, people have to be more prepared for cold and... Um, I have people around like Christmas time and Saturnalia and uh, Kwanzaa and and uh, what's uh, Festivus? <laughs> it's Boscovus. So we do a winter celebration from about winter solstice to January seventh, and that's a private event. Um, and that's not within the 
eight months that we're closed. So it's an exception to us being closed during the winter. Uh, the most closed we are is January, late after the 7th, and then February. And it's just going to be residents here, I think. I'm not going to run programs. If somebody wanted to and the place develops enough, sure, but it's not the ideal time of year. Uh, right now, my ideal time of year is, yeah, it remains September and October for, for hosting people. Um, but let's get back to the to the moon and the spreadsheet. So I hope you understood the idea. If not, I'll share an example. I'll make it public. It's fine. Um, I just calculate them for the whole year, and then I use that with a calendar, and I start to mark when I think would be good dates for events. They're affected by things like three-day weekends here, but a lot of the people I want to uh, cater to aren't in a particular schedule, or some, some of them are teachers or students, or they have cyclical work or t like seasonal work. What's that called? Seasonal work, yeah. And so there's times when, when they could enjoy things. Uh, so it's, it's, it's tricky to do the planning. Um, I don't like the idea of shorter term events. So even though I mentioned three day weekends, I, I want to make that be a time when somebody takes their vacation and adds it to their three day weekend or something and gets a longer experience here. Because I just am not into short term people. I'm not at all. And that's one of the reasons I don't want to do full moon parties or, you know, very party partying kind of things. I want to get in this groove of a nice stable pattern. Like, so I, even though I want holidays and some of those holidays will be based on the sun, I like I think we should party all the time in some sense. But the focus has got to remain on the work. And there's I've had people here who understood that and ones who didn't. And I'm doing better to um, make a social contract with people come here so that the place is what I envision it to be and serves in the way that the supporters of it want. Uh, so far, the primary supporter is me, but there's a few others. And there's also a lot of people who are emotional and intellectual support for the project. And so they matter actually to me quite a bit, too. It's getting nice out there. Okay, I'm going to go out there again. Oh, what did I forget last time? Why did I come up here? I didn't remember. Oh. Oh yeah, wear the right glasses. Oh yeah, I had a reading glasses on. That's really dumb. Uh, not sure I'm always the brightest. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go enjoy the outside. So one of the reasons I'm talking about this is, of course, selfish. I want to um, figure out when the most comfortable times here and be the most comfortable. And I've been uncomfortable for the last, coming up on two years pretty soon. i got some months left, so over a year and a half of being injured and not being able to do anything. I'm the most independent I've ever been right now in this video. I'm thrilled. I'm not afraid of like falling down the fucking stairs, which I would have been before. Well, actually, I'm still afraid of it. That's why I'm being careful. <laughs> but uh, it's not crippling fear. <laughs> I'm the punniest guy in the world. Um, actually, there were some lame jokes I did make about my con complete uh, predicament. <laughs> um, uh, uh, what am I doing? Jesus. Uh. All right. So, and then so part of that is figuring out when is, is already comfortable to live outside and then making spaces for that. One of the problems is I'm on a computer all the time. Uh, and so what I think we should do, this is a great thing to focus on, is make semi-outdoor offices. Now, the reason I usually stop thinking about that as soon as, as soon as I say it is because that's hard. And I don't feel like it. it. It sounds like a tricky construction problem to design, but I think i got to do it anyway. And I think this is what I'm coming up with. Is essentially, what we want is for people to have um, people like me who are going to be on their computer quite a bit. Some of them work on their computer. 